Breast cancer is a disease in which cell in the breast grows out of control. There are different kinds of breast cancer. The kind of breast cancer depends on which cell in the breast turns into cancer. It can begin in different part of the breast. Breast cancer can spread outside the breast through blood vessels and lymph vessels. When it spreads to other parts of the body, it is said to have metastasites. It occurs almost entirely in women. But men can get breast cancer too. World over, October is celebrated Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We all are aware of breast cancer, but still we are unaware somewhat. Today we have Dr. Kanchan Paul with us to enlighten us more about the breast cancer. Thank you, Doctor. So as we all know that breast cancer is one of the major phenomena in women, but still there is you know some doubts and unawareness between the women. Not taking it seriously. So, um, as I start, so the basic question which I start with is, what is breast cancer? So, hello to everybody. Um, breast cancer is actually one of the commonest cancer amongst women now. In India, till about a decade ago, cervical cancer was the commonest cancer, which is cancer of the mouth of the uterus. But now, cancer in the breast, which is obviously breast cancer has become the top number one cancer amongst women in our country and more commonly so in metropolitan cities like Delhi, Mumbai it is seen more often in women So uh, doctor, as we say that you know, breast cancer are hitting women everywhere and still people are not aware or maybe you know they are aware but they just don't want to get aware more because maybe you know hesitation maybe I'm not sure so, uh, can you tell me some of the criteria or some of the common symptoms which can be tested at home as well? And then, you know, when you are aware that you have, you might have breast cancer, you can come to the hospital and get yourself checked. So, you know, um, this is the saddest story in our country that although breast cancer is one of the commonest cancer amongst women, and it is the commonest cancer amongst women, you know, which leads to deaths among women we are still not aware about it and even women who know about it the fear of the word cancer is so big that even when they detect a symptom they are afraid to come forward so part of it is lack of awareness part of it is fear and also the shame because a lot of women may not have a connect with a female doctor and they might feel shy to go to a male doctor and sometimes even to a female doctor they feel shy to go so if we have to actually counter the problem that breast cancer is posing to our community then it is so important for us to spread the message that a breast cancer if detected in time is curable and two we should all be aware of what the symptoms and signs are and what we should be doing to pick it up early because the only sure short way of having success at treatments is to catch it early early detection is the buzzword when it comes to breast cancer so how does early detection happen one to be self-aware about your own body Every single woman from the time she develops breasts from as young as she is 16, 17, 18 should know how to examine her breasts with her own hands. Luckily, breasts are external organs. You see and feel them every day. So you should know how the power of your own hands can help you detect this cancer early. The commonest symptom of breast cancer is a lump in the breast. So a lot of women ask me, how will we know if we have a lump in our breast? So if you regularly self-examine and you know what is normal for you, you will always be able to pick up the abnormal, which could be a lump. Now, one big myth about breast cancer is that we feel that if we have a symptom and it doesn't hurt and there is no pain, then everything is okay and we don't need to go to a doctor. But more than 90% of the time, a lump in the breast which is a cancerous lump does not hurt so it is so important to know that any painless lump must be brought to the attention of the doctor at the earliest so painless lump is the first and the most important symptom of breast cancer other symptoms could be change in the shape and size of the breast the skin becoming thickened nipple going inwards 
Now a lot of women have nipples which from birth are pointing inwards and they never point outwards. It's called congenital inversion. But if your nipples always normally pointed outwards and you feel that they're getting pulled inwards, especially more so in one breast, you must get it checked out. Also, if there is discharge from the nipple. Now, you, when we teach women how to self-examine, we tell them that all obviously look for the lumps and the changes in the skin, but also press the nipple to look for discharge. If the discharge is blood-stained or watery, you must bring it to the attention of the doctor, even if it happens one time. Yellow, green and white discharge are generally normal. There are certain rare forms of cancer in which there are wounds or ulcers or rashes on the skin of the nipple or the breast which don't go away with the routine treatment that your doctor might be giving you. If you notice that, then you must visit an oncologist at the earliest. So this is the power of your hands in detecting these symptoms. We also recommend that from the age of 40 onwards, you must get a doctor to physically examine you once every year and discuss with the doctor about getting a test called a mammogram, which is an x-ray of the breast, which we routinely recommend should be done from the age of 40 onwards. It can be done either at one or two yearly intervals as per your doctor's guidance. So these are the important things to be aware of. If you are on board doing your self-examination, getting your mammograms done in time, then breast cancer can be detected in stage 0, stage 1, stage 2 when it is treatable and a lot of times curable. But if we wait, because it is painless, it can continue to grow and once it becomes large, it has the potential to spread in the body. And once it spreads, it can turn into stage 4 cancer, which is difficult to treat. So Dr. Kanchan, as we talked about, you know, the self-examination. So, you know, oh, there are, you know, there are some stages where the secretion of, say, you know, you said the liquid uh, can be common and, you know, the women who are pregnant. So, this question was raised before we were in the live also. So when the women are pregnant and they are in between of pregnancy or say after the pregnancy, the secretion of the white thing is always there. So if the women that time is also suffering from the breast cancer, do you think they can uh, you know like analyze that time by the secretion of that thing? So see during pregnancy, women can begin to develop a milky secretion from the fifth, sixth month onwards. That is normal, okay? But if it is, as I said, blood stained or very watery, you have to get it checked with your doctor. Now, during breastfeeding, milky nipple discharge is going to happen, isn't it? It's natural to develop mm -hmm. milk and breastfeed. Yeah. What you need to worry about during pregnancy and breastfeeding is if you're developing lumps in the breast. So, the commonest lump that you will develop in your breast when you are breastfeeding is a lump of infection. Sometimes women aren't unable to breastfeed properly, milk remains in the breast and that can lead to increased risk of infection. So that is called lactational mastitis or the infection in the breast that develops during breastfeeding. That is the commonest lump we see in women of in breasts of women who are breastfeeding. The second commonest lump is a lump which is a milk lump. So the milk, instead of coming out through the ducts and from the nipple, it can make a lump which is like a bag full of milk, like a little balloon of milk. It's called a galactosine. And the least common lump in the breast during pregnancy and breastfeeding is that of cancer. Now, even for doctors, sometimes it is difficult to clinically say just basis and examination whether this is a cancerous lump or a non-cancerous lump. So it is imperative that an ultrasound scan of the breast be done. It is imperative that if it is a solid and not a milk filled lump, then we need to do a needle biopsy to confirm whether it is a cancerous lump or whether it is not a cancerous lump. So it's very, very important if during pregnancy and breastfeeding, you develop a lump in your breast, please don't let anybody tell you that this is ki gang hai. Unless you have had a doctor check it, unless you have had an ultrasound of the breast to confirm it and if it is a solid lump until you have a biopsy to confirm that this is not a cancer you must not sit comfortably all this must be done 
pregnancy associated and breastfeeding associated breast cancer is not that common so we're not trying to scare anybody here but yes any lump in the breast must be checked out so as we talk about the breast cancer and the feeding during that time so the question arises from here is so if a mother is having you know a, a woman who is in pregnancy the mode of pregnancy and in between she develops a breast cancer so the major question arises from here is another that is breast cancer healthy to like you know it's genetic if you know the mother is having it maybe during the pregnancy but the child also get it and if not that um, if some mother you know if somebody is having that uh, history of having breast cancers in the heredity is it possible uh, that you know the child at the end of the day will have the breast cancer or maybe not but is it like hereditary or genetic in the family or so does it run like that yeah. so about 90% breast cancer happens in women who do not have a family history okay. but about 10 to 15% breast cancer is associated with a family history risk so when we talk of family history risk it means that if your mother if your sister if your aunts both from the dad side or from your mother side or even a male member in the family if they have had breast cancer then your risk of breast cancer increases so the more the number of family members who have had breast or ovarian cancer the younger the age of the family member when they got the breast or ovarian cancer the higher your risk of developing it and now there are certain blood tests which can calculate your risk or your definite risk of developing cancer by doing a genetic analysis of your body through the blood test so everybody knows that angelina jolie made the breca 1 and 2 gene very famous which is the breast cancer related genes so you can have a blood test to confirm but please do not go and get this test done unless your doctor has recommended it and unless you have had a chance to discuss this with a genetic counselor who can guide you whether you should get this test done or not so yes breast cancer can run in families but it is not that common the other part of the question is that if a woman is pregnant and she develops breast cancer during pregnancy or during breastfeeding then can she pass it on to her child through the placenta that never happens okay so we know that we can be sometimes detect women who are pregnant uh, during their diagnosis of breast cancer they can go on to have successful treatments chemotherapy can be given during pregnancy and we have success stories of women going on to have healthy babies but obviously they have to be managed in highly specialized cancer clinics where the oncologist the surgeon the gynecologist are all looking after both the health of the woman and also the unborn baby so that complications don't happen so women who are pregnant and have breast cancer can go on to have healthy children also uh, you know sometimes we get asked that if somebody has had a breast cancer can they have pregnancy later on so it's an important question to answer why because breast cancer is getting younger and younger mm-hmm. and we see a lot of breast cancer in young women now who have yet to start their families so this question always comes about because chemotherapy can lead to shutdown of the ovaries and also sometimes we give hormonal blockade tablets to women who have hormone sensitive breast cancer and we continue this tablet for 5 to 10 years so then women ask how can i have a baby yeah. so there are ways in which the doctor can guide you about either preserving your eggs like they do in um, you know ivf treatments or you can be given ways and measures to improve your fertility after a diagnosis of cancer and there are many many success stories of women treated for breast cancer going on to have pregnancies and having kids so uh, as we go for this thing so you know there is according to needs and needs but people have a lot of you know things according to this that if we go for a breast cancer treatment only way to cut it down is to you know amputate your breast there is no other way to do it and then they you know start getting this thing that you know without breast how are we going to low uh, let it be it's going to go away so like is it true or it's just another myth it is a big myth that the breast always needs to be removed if you have cancer mm-hmm. so when we spoke about early detection herein lies one of the big benefits of early detection is that if we pick up a cancer when it is small then we can do a safe surgery to just remove the lump and not remove the breast 
but for that your doctor has to ensure through tests like mammograms ultrasound and when needed an mri of the breast to confirm that it is safe to save the breast if we are saving the breast then most women will need to have radiotherapy to the breast um when i say most women all women who are young will need it but in older women above the age of 70 then we can discuss whether radiation is needed or not but you will need to have some form of treatment other than just the removal of the lump to ensure that the cancer does not come back however if the cancer is large and the doctor doesn't feel that it is safe to save the breast sometimes we can give chemotherapy before surgery to shrink the tumor and it shrinks to a size that then makes it safe for us to save the breast so this is called down staging and the chemo that we give is called neo adjuvant chemotherapy which means chemo to be given before surgery is planned but there are some women in whom we can offer neither we can't offer direct surgery to save the breast we can't offer chemotherapy to shrink the lump because of the nature and extent of the disease and they are offered total removal but in that case you must make sure that you discuss with your doctor the option of reconstruction in which we can make a new breast by using either tissue from your own body or by using silicon implants and this type of surgery can be done either at the time when the whole breast is being removed which is called primary reconstruction or after all your treatments have completed you can come back to have your breast reconstructed if you choose not to reconstruct the breast and that side of the chest wall is flat there are also certain prostheses as we call them which are available which can be put in the bra so when you wear your clothes you look normal because there is a soft silicone prosthesis which can be worn in your undergarments and then uh, you know if you choose not to have reconstruction even that is good enough so uh, when we talk about this uh, the breast cancer what is the common age you know like the minimum minimal state, uh, so, age and the maximum age? yeah so you know i would like to quote here the difference between the western world and india in the west breast cancer peaks in the 5th and 6th decade whereas in india breast cancer peaks a decade earlier so more indian women are likely to get breast cancer in their 40s and 50s also another sad statistic is that whereas in the western world only about 5 to 6% of all breast cancers happen under the age of 40 in india sadly the number is anywhere between 16 to 20% so we do have a large number of young women under the age of 40 getting breast cancer but it's not that common under the age of 30 so although we do see women in their 20s with breast cancer the youngest that i have seen is a 20 year old with breast cancer uh, but that's not a common age generally they have genetic issues because of which they develop the cancer so the commonest age is fourth and fifth decade and that is why we recommend that once you turn 40 you must get some sort of regular breast tests done uh, with your doctor physical examination mammograms when recommended and all times you have to remember monthly self examination with your hand must continue so oh, see post covid everything was normal so when covid hurt do you think covid has any how or any way uh you know affected the treatment of the breast cancer in any way people are not going to hospitals because of the covid and then you know like self examination was just you know another thing because the covid was there it gave the importance to that as a breast cancer or the breast thing you know the the things people are like you know aware of in between and then the covid hit and it all got summer so do you think so you know yes that's what happened covid re- led to stalling of um, you know most treatments which were not considered to be emergency mm-hmm. treatments right so whereas the patient with the heart attack and the accident was still coming to the hospital but women who felt lumps in their breast were not coming forward women who had been treated for breast cancer were not coming for the regular checks mm-hmm. and this phenomena was not just seen in india it was seen worldwide okay. in fact so many cancer hospitals got converted to covid care centers yeah. and yes cancer care suffered in a big way mm-hmm. but now things are back to normal and we are getting patients coming back to clinic so there is no need to fear and um, yes covid did impact screening in a big way mm-hmm. and diagnosis and treatment of cancer obviously such so you know there are a lot of things as we talking about screening i just want to move the question that uh, there are home screenings for the breast you know the breast testing are they successful so there is no gold standard 
other than a mammogram which is done in a hospital setting mm -hmm. for screening for breast cancer okay so now there are devices like handheld devices uh, you know for that you can use at home mm -hmm. and there's also a light th device in which you shine a light on your breast but none of these is gold standard mm -hmm. physical examination with your hands regular checkups with your doctor mm -hmm. and a screening mammogram when recommended so there is no proven home detection kit for breast cancer so uh, there were some more questions that day i would like to raise for that you know women who are saying that if what we if we have a breast cancer are there any discharge from our uterus or anything else or is just the breast we are having the discharge from just you know so that we can just like no no so you know uterus and ovaries are separate from the breast mm -hmm. um if you're having a vaginal discharge that is not linked to breast cancer at all but if you have taken treatment for breast cancer and you are on a drug called tamoxifen it can affect the lining of your uterus in which case obviously your doctor would have guided you what are the red flags and the signs to look out for also in women who have a family history of breast cancer and have a gene like the BRCA1 or 2 positive in them ovarian cancer can be linked with breast cancer so they are guided on what tests to do but discharge from the vagina is not linked to breast discharge so doctor how far do we you know as we say about chemotherapy and the radiotherapy how far this chemotherapy and the radiotherapy is you know that you know, affected one cancer how much it can cut down you know people have this thing ki chemotherapy karwa li hai ya fir radiotherapy karwa li hai isse kuch nahi hota hai sirf you know we just get bold and baal chale jate hain body mein skin problems ho jati hain you know the mix so are they so they are not myths actually there are side effects mm -hmm. of of chemo chemo leads to hair loss and leads to reduction in your immunity but look at the bigger picture here chemo protects or cures cancer okay so whenever my patients the moment they hear the word chemo they get scared i tell them that first of all you don't have to be scared about anything but if you have to be scared then be scared of the disease don't be scared of the treatments yeah, because exactly. treatments are there to make you better everything yeah. has a side effect you get into a car you risk an accident oh, is it taking a bigger picture where yes. you are alive you have actually you so, are alive and discuss openly yeah. with the doctor what could be the side effects because mm -hmm. there are ways to overcome side effects yes. so if you're losing your hair nowadays there is something called a penguin cap in which cold therapy is given to the scalp while you're having mm -hmm. chemotherapy which can prevent hair loss in some women mm -hmm. then there are wigs mm -hmm. that are available there are scarves that are available because remember any side effect of chemo that you see physically is reversible so once the chemo finishes all of that gets reversed so you don't have to be scared about the side effects but yes you must have an open discussion with your doctor please don't go on blogs on the net or google search for symptoms and signs or side effects mm -hmm. because you will be left scared and it's always a good idea to talk openly with your doctor about all side effects so about that was google you search anything you are a cancer patient google shows you yeah, everything absolutely. about cancer <laughs> that you have a cancer yeah. so about that uh, radiotherapy one of uh, you know like chemotherapy and radiotherapy specific kaun si aisi therapy hai which like hurts like people are like ye wali therapy karwayenge to karwate samay dard hoga we will die of pain only yes. so you know so you know cancer doesn't hurt mm -hmm. and most of the treatments for cancer are painless okay, okay. so chemo is painless radiation is painless surgery yes is associated with pain but there are pain killers that you get given to take care of that pain mm -hmm. so painless treatments for chemo radiation and surgery they are generally painless treatments mm -hmm. and and you don't have to worry about severe pain and if any of these treatments is giving you severe pain there is obviously something wrong and the doctor must be told about it mm -hmm. so that we can get to the bottom of why that severe pain is happening which is very unusual to happen so breast cancer as we all heard from dr kanchan herself and how important it is for us to know to self examine about the breast cancer and as soon as possible to see a little bit of lump in your breast go visit your cancer doctor and just get it checked today thank you so much for having me on and highlighting the importance of breast cancer which is becoming a major public health problem